For this video, I present this question. If you react two moles of H2 with one mole of O2, according to this equation, how many moles of H2O will you produce? So let's imagine we were trying to make a cake and it was a simple recipe with only four ingredients, flour, sugar, oil, and eggs. Let's pretend in this imaginary scenario that we had an unlimited infinite amount of three of those ingredients of all of the ingredients except for eggs. Could you make an infinite number of cakes? Obviously not. The amount of cakes that you could get would be determined completely by the one ingredient that runs out, in this case, the eggs. Make sense? In other words, the eggs in this scenario would be the limiting ingredient, the one that is limited and therefore determines how many total cakes you can make. Same kind of principle applies to chemical reactions. In order to determine the total amount of product that we're gonna make in any scenario, we have to identify which of the reactants is going to run out first. In other words, the limiting reactant. For doing that, I like to use this mnemonic that I invented, B, C, D, where B stands for balance the equation, C for convert to moles, and D, which is divide your mole amounts by the corresponding coefficients. The smallest answer ends up being the limiting reactant. Starting then with B, balance the chemical equation. Using principles that we've discussed in another video that I'll link to floating over my head or in the description, you might notice that this equation comes to us balanced. So we're done with step B. Step C is convert everything to moles. Again, for this problem, it's given us all of the amounts in moles, so I don't really have to do any additional things to achieve that. We're done with C. Now we have to divide our moles by their corresponding coefficients. Here's the number of moles of hydrogen. Two moles, and what is the coefficient tied to the hydrogen? It's a two. So I'm gonna divide this two by this coefficient two. You see what I'm saying? Two divided by two comes to one. Now we do the same thing for the oxygen. I've got one mole here and what coefficient is next to the oxygen? Well, there's no coefficient written, so it's an implied or understood one. So I'm gonna divide one here by the implied or understood one coefficient and that also comes to one. So the smallest of these is the limiting reactant. So which one's smaller, one or one? Yeah, you can see they're exactly the same. So what do we do? Well, this is one of those rare circumstances in which we've added both of the reactants, the H2 and the O2, in the exact perfect amounts to where both of them are limiting, the exact perfect amounts. Now, this is simple enough where you could just look at this and determine how many moles you should end up getting of your H2O product. Suffice it to say, if you go through the full process, we're just gonna pick either of these because they're both the limiting reactant because they're added in the exact perfect ratios and use it to calculate or determine the total number of moles of H2O. Let's go ahead and do that with the hydrogen. So in this scenario, I have two moles total of hydrogen and then we just lay out our dimensional analysis units. My units in the denominator here have to be equal to the units in the previous term, moles H2, so they cancel each other out. Now I want to eventually get to moles H2O. Can moles of one thing and moles of another touch? In other words, can I put moles H2 and moles H2O in the same set of parentheses? The answer is yes. The numbers that I put here are the coefficients in the bounced equation because each of those coefficients really is a mole to mole or molecule to molecule ratio. I've got a two in front of the H2 and I've got a two in front of the H2O. You'll notice that unit wise, the moles H2 cancel each other out and I'm left with units of moles H2O. So now it's just number crunching. 2 times 2 is 4, divided by 2, gives me an answer of 2 moles H2O. Now again, based on the ratios that you can see here, that's something that you would naturally predict, but that is the answer to this question.